warning you right now that this review is going to have spoilers in it. So, I'm going to sum up my thoughts right here with... <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Void. I'm Brian, your host, and today I'm going to be talking about Fate Stay Night Heaven's Field 2 Lost Butterfly. These titles are long. So, as I said in my review of Presage Flowers, all the pieces are put into place. And those pieces are terrible places to be. So, first to start off with, this movie does heavily focus on furthering the mental tragedy that is Sakura Mato. And it doesn't hold back. It doesn't reach NC-17 levels, but it hits you harder than I ever thought it was going to. It does focus on the all the various sorts of rape from the bugs to the Shinji. It, 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 it's just a not pleasant experience to go through her story as well as her mental degradation as the shadow more and more takes over her. And yeah, I warned you about spoilers and no complaining about it now because the shadow is Sakura. It's the evilness of the grail. It's Angramayu. And it's placed inside of Sakura. Still not entirely sure how that happened. Zoken touches on it slightly, but it's never, like, fully explained, and to me personally, I don't really care if it's ever fully explained, because it's not about that it happened, it's that it's happening, and the effects of it happening are very interesting to watch unfold. It's like, I, I'm pretty sure a bunch of people would disagree with me on this, but I, I don't really need the full explanation of how... I just care about the fact in and of itself. And further building on Sakura, this film does build up more about Shiro's relationship and romance with her. And it ends up that they become a couple at the end of the film, or at least halfway through the film, and they're still sort of a couple at the end of the film. And of course, this leads to a really interesting character arc for both characters. Shiro ends up giving up his ideals of becoming a hero of justice and solely wants to just protect Sakura, even if it's from Sakura herself, even if Sakura is evil, even if Sakura is the one that's going to hurt so many people, whether she wants to or not. And of course, that breaks Sakura's heart. She loves Shiro, she loves his ideals, she loves who he is. The fact that she is changing that is one of the final straws for her. Like, to me, that and Shinji's final assault on her, which culminates in her killing him, those two events are the final things that break her. And at the end of the film, like, the lead into the third movie, she becomes one with all the evils of the Grail. She's fully corrupted. And it's just brilliant storytelling because they built up that moment through two films. And yeah, you can say that it also built it up in Zero, but in, in any Fate Stay Night material, you don't need to watch Zero. Because Zero's a prequel. It came after the original Fate Stay Night story, so it's either you know it or you don't. It doesn't really matter if you know it going in, because it doesn't really change anything. And if you don't know what's going in, it still doesn't change anything because they explain things that happened. Or at least the things that you need to know happened in order to understand which story is happening. But yeah, for all the uncomfortable material in this movie, it flew. It felt like half the running time. And this is a movie with only one big fight scene. There was like... A small action set piece uh, a little after the big fight. But really, there was only really one big action scene, and that was Saber Alter versus Berserker. And that was glorious. Yeah, Saber has 
overpowered grail hacks and all that fun stuff. But regardless of that, it was just an amazing fight. She no-sells Heracles' attacks a lot, but the way I justify that is that she's basically supposed to be like a machine at this point. There's really nothing there about her. She just does what she's told. So, I, I'm never really expecting any grander emotion from her. So, her no-selling attacks doesn't really bother me because it's just like, you're punching a robot. A robot's gonna no-sell your shit anyway. But still, the choreography, the speed, the snappiness, the just rampant destruction and brutality in every single attack both parties gave. Was well, a sight of a hold. It was an adrenaline rush. It was just so cool. And if you're looking for me to give comparisons and contractions to the visual novel, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I've never played the visual novel, nor do I really intend to. From what I've seen, I don't like the art style. I don't like the uh, writing at all. I can understand if there are some things that are technically done better in the visual novel than in the movie or even like the TV series. I can understand that, but it's just like, as a whole, just from what I've seen, nothing really appeals to me about the visual novels. And I can't really see that changing unless they're given like a overhaul update. And I mean like keep like the same plot and like the scenarios that the visual novel has but like polish up the writing a bit and use more polished drawings that the artist can do now like I like the artist's art now but then no but yeah regardless of all that let me wrap this up this movie's dark and if you did not know this going into it even after the first movie, because again, the first movie wasn't really all that dark. It was more just somber. This movie is pitch black, which makes me terrified for what the third movie is going to be. Because if this movie didn't really hold its punches inside of an R rating, I'm kind of scared to see how hard the third movie is going to hit me. But I'm also really excited for it. That's the good thing I have to say about this movie. Like, the best thing is that it keeps my excitement to the highest. Even when I'm uncomfortable, even when I'm kind of just absolutely disturbed, I still want to know. And not even out just a morbid curiosity, I am deeply invested in this story, in these characters, more than I have ever been. Even in Unlimited Blade Works. And I love that series. I like it a lot. I was nowhere near as invested in these characters as then, as now. So, as I said in my last review, still buying all the special editions of these movies because A, the box is still going to be amazing and these movies are worth it. These are such good movies so far. These, I, I, I'm pretty sure by the end of the third movie, these are probably going to be one of my more favorite movies and it's just like the fact that they're never going to get Oscars or any single kind of award like that feels criminal to me because these are such masterfully told stories so far and I can't wait until the third one to wrap it up the visuals are beautiful the story is heartbreakingly beautiful and I can't ask for more in these movies. So, yeah, that's my review. Those are my thoughts. What did you think of the movie? Have you seen it yet? If you haven't, why did you not listen to my spoiler warning? Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon if you are subscribed so you don't miss an upload from me, and I will catch you next time in the void. Later.